Dear learners, welcome to the module. This video is a part of the module Concepts of ODL and the Changing Nature of ODL. The term open and distance learning is relatively new. It has an umbrella in nature and it accommodates a large number of terms under it. Here we shall take a look at a few of them. Correspondence education, home study and independent education. They are quite similar to one another and basically are representative of a type of education where the learners do not have to leave their homes for study. These modes have traditionally used the printed educational resources but now are slowly turning towards multimedia educational resources. We shall next talk about external studies and distance teaching. External study is a mode of distance education where the instruction takes place somewhere far away from the main campus. For example, the classes can take place in a remote classroom which is not located on the main campus. Distance study is a term that explains only half of the term open and distance learning. This mode deals specifically with the teacher's role rather than the whole system. Self-instruction is a term which defines the process in which a learner is guided through a step-by-step -step learning process by the learning material. One of the most important features of self-instruction is self-assessment. The assessment can either be paper or computer-based. Continuing education is quite a vague term. It mostly applies to non-credit education. The courses in continuing education can either be taken on or off campus. Adult education. Adult education is related to adult learning and emphasizes on the concepts and the principles of the same. Adult learning is known as anthropology, while child learning is known as pedagogy. Technology based or mediated education. This kind of education is a system in which technology plays a major part in the process of education. The traditional print resources are not used. The system can function independently making use of computer assisted, computer managed learning and conference facilities. In learner centered education, the learner is the key figure. All factors and processes are adjusted in favor of the learner, which includes flexible intervals of study, negotiated content, flexible methods of education, negotiable learning methods and also provides the learner with a number of support systems. Open learning. The educational philosophy of open learning is focused on providing a variety of options to the learner. These choices may include choice about the place of study, whether be it home, study centers or campus, the pace of study, which can be time bound or open, and the medium of study, which could be print or multimedia content. It helps the learners with a variety of support mechanisms and provides different entry and exit points. Distributed learning and flexible learning. Distributed learning focuses on the concept of learning, that means, how the education is delivered is more important rather than focusing on the technology used to deliver it. Flexible learning focuses on the creation of classroom space. It combines both classroom and media strategies. The philosophy of flexible learning is learner-centered. It identifies the differences in the needs of the learners and the diversity in their learning styles. It inculcates the habits and skills of lifelong learning by recognizing the importance of equity in curriculum and pedagogy. Next, we shall talk about the types of ODL systems. There are different types of or modes of institutions that function in the ODL system. There are single mode institutions, dual mode institutions, and mixed mode institutions. Further, we shall know more about them and see a few examples of these types. Single mode institutions. Basically, these institutions are set up in a way to offer courses and programs of study at a distance. Some kind of face-to-face -face interaction may be involved, but it is on an optional basis. The teaching and learning processes are mediated in a specific way. This may be in print, including correspondence by audio, video, teleconferencing facilities, video conference, or either through computer or internet-based facilities. Many of the mega universities of the world function as single-mode universities. Two examples of single-mode universities are Indira Gandhi National Open University and the United Kingdom Open University. Dual mode institution. The dual mode institution is designed in such a way that they provide education through both traditional classroom based methods and the distance based methods. These kind of institutions provide courses in both the modes with a common examination. They distinguish between the learners as two types, regular and external. The University of Nairobi and the University of Zambia are examples of dual mode institutions. Mixed mode institutions. Mixed mode institutions are the latest crop that has emerged among the institutions and they aim to provide maximum flexibility to the learners. They help the learners with a variety of choices in the modes of study. The learners have many options which include combinations of individual or group-based learning, 
face to face or mediated interactions etc such institutions also maximize the flexibility of the place and the pace of study the single and dual mode institutions are also moving towards the mixed mode modoc university and the deakin university are examples of mixed mode universities this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching please watch the next video to know about the functions of odl the advantages of odl and the changing nature of odl